This video will cover the basics of setting up the message communication using Ethernet IP on the MicroLogix PLC. In this example, we'll be using a MicroLogix 1100 series PLC, but no matter which MicroLogix you have, the setup should be very similar. Also, with the Slick 500 or SLC5 PLC, it also does explicit message communication, so the setup should be very similar, although some of the parameters, like the message command, might be a little different. I am already connected to the MicroLogix PLC with my software here, but just for reference, to show you the configuration of the Ethernet channel, the appropriate IP address has been set up for the network conditions. So your address will vary, of course, depending on how you're connecting to your PLC, but that's already been set up ahead of time. Since the MicroLogix type PLC does not do the implicit fixed cycle communication, like on the control and compact Logix, we need to set up the explicit message command. In order to do that, we need to add some data files to the PLC program so we can send our data back and forth and create that message. So right click on the data file tabs and click new. So the first thing you need to add is what's called the message type or message data type, so to create the message. So choose that as the type and just simply give it a uh, name here. I'm gonna call it EIP message. You can also give it a description if you like, but I'll leave the rest of the stuff default. The next type you need to add when adding an explicit message to the MicroLogix is what's called the extended routing information. This is also used when you set up the message command as you'll see shortly. Again, I'll go ahead and give this a name. And again, you can, descript you can give it a description if you want, but just leave the rest the same. So you can see these have been added to the data files here. Next, we need to add some data files or data locations to be able to send and receive information from when we create our messages. So again, right click on the data files, click new. There's a couple different options for the types here. You could use uh, integer, which is 16-bit locations. You can use float, which is uh, single precision floating point locations. But the easiest thing to do with Ethernet IP communication is use the long type. What this will do is create 32-bit locations to store send and receive from, because a lot of stuff that you work with when you're working with e Ethernet IP is 32 bits. So we'll create long, and we'll give it a name. We'll call this one send. So this will be the stuff we'll send from. Again, you can give it a description if you like. But uh, this one, again, you're going to need more than one element. So just enough, you're going to make sure you have enough to be able to send and receive the appropriate amount of data from. So for this example, we'll go ahead and set that to 128 elements, and we'll go ahead and click OK. So now we need another data location to, to receive data to. So we'll go ahead and again click new. We'll choose long data type again. We'll call this our receive. I'll just call it REC. Again, you can give it a description if you want. And uh, we'll use 128 elements just like the other one. So you can see we've now added the message data types that we need to set up our message. And now we have locations to send and receive from. Now that we have the necessary data files added to create our message, we can go ahead and add our message to the PLC program. You can see we have a basic wrong already set up that uh, we can add our message command to. And this is under the input output tab, as you can see here, just it's called MSG message command. So we'll go ahead and drop that into the rung here. Uh, if this is a SLC PLC, this message is known as EMM. So it might look a little different as far as the message, but the basic setup is the same. After you've added your message command, you'll see message file here, and you need so this is where you need to add that uh, message data type that you've added. So in this case, mine's MG9. So we'll go ahead and add that here. So MG9 colon zero. So you need to reference that message data type that you set up for the message file. Once you've referenced your message data type for the message file. You can go ahead and set up the rest of the message. Just double click the setup screen here and that'll bring up the message setup. So the channel, for the channel you need to make sure you choose the Ethernet channel because this is an Ethernet type of function here. So once you choose that it'll uh, set up the rest of the message here. So as far as the communication command here we're going to choose CIP generic and that's for the explicit message setup. And uh, once you choose that it'll open up these other fields here as you can see. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do with Ethernet IP explicit messaging, it's like read the assembly, write the assembly. So that's reading and writing the entire data assembly, kind of like similar to what Control Logics does automatically through the implicit 
type communication. You can even get and set single attributes, but uh, the most common stuff you can do with, with is what's called a custom service. So we're going to choose custom as the service uh, down here, and we'll set up the rest of it as we go here. So for data table address receive, this is where we'll re reference our receive data type. So remember that L12 that we set up here. So we'll go ahead and put that in here for the receive information. Now, the size is going to depend on the message that we're using, so we'll show you a couple different examples of that in diff different videos here, but for the for now, we're just going to leave that one, but that's going to vary depending on the custom service that you're doing. Now, the send information is from our L12, so I'll go ahead and set, excuse me, L11. So I'll go ahead and set that. And again, the size of the send information will depend on the message, which will be shown in some of the examples. But another common setup that you need to set here is the extending routing information, the IRX file. So if you remember, we set that up before. It's RIX10, so we need to reference that here. So I'll go ahead and set that in here. Now again, the service code here for the custom service is going to depend on which service you're doing, and that will be shown in those ex in the examples that we'll have in the other videos. But so we'll get back to that on the message. But for the the standard items is the class ID. So that's common or the same for any CVX message. And that for the CVX series, it's six A hex. So that's the class. ID you want to put in there. The instance will be 1 and then put in a 0 for the attribute. So this is how you'll be setting up all the custom service messages, uh, the attributes here. And again the service code is going to depend on the message so that'll be shown in the specific examples as well as the size of the send and receive information. But another common setting here is the multi-hop tab. This is where you need to set up the address of the CVX controller. So in other words the IP address of where this message will be sent to. So this is the address of the controller. Uh, in this example, we have a CVX setup that has an address of 172.19.64, and it's at .133. So again, this is the address of the actual controller that this message is going to be sent to. So that's the basics of setting up the message. We can go ahead and close this. Again, the, the custom service examples will show you more details on this setup, but this is the basic you need to get going to get this message set up.